Imagine standing in your kitchen, about to wrap leftovers with a sheet of aluminum foil, a simple action you've done countless times. Now pause for a moment and consider, how does this thin, flexible sheet that perfectly preserves your food's freshness come to be? From a massive, solid block of aluminum to a delicate foil you can mold with your hands, the transformation is nothing short of magical. But the story behind this kitchen hero is as layered as the foil itself. How did we learn to extract and mold this metal so it's as malleable as paper, yet as durable as steel? What transformations does it undergo before arriving as the shiny, versatile sheets in your kitchen drawer? As we venture into the heart of aluminum foil's creation, let's start at the very beginning bauxite mining. Bauxite, a reddish-brown ore, is the primary source of aluminum and teams with aluminum oxide. Among the largest bauxite mines globally, is the WEPA mine in Australia, a colossal operation producing a staggering 30 million tons of bauxite annually. This mine alone demonstrates the scale at which we begin the journey towards creating aluminum foil. The process of transforming bauxite into aluminum begins with its extraction from the earth. Once mined, bauxite undergoes the first critical phase, refining. This step is crucial for separating aluminum oxide from the ore. The journey from raw bauxite to pure aluminum oxide involves a fascinating process known as the buyer process. In the buyer process, the bauxite ore is first crushed and then mixed with caustic soda to create a slurry. This mixture is then heated under high pressure. In a digester, where the conditions are so extreme that the aluminum compounds dissolve into the solution, leaving behind impurities. It's a rigorous test of endurance for the materials, as they're transformed under temperatures ranging from 230 to 520 degf and pressures up to 50 Lib per N2. The solution that emerges, now freed from the bulk of its impurities, resembles dark coffee. This liquid is filtered, removing fine particles, and then enters precipitation tanks. Here, seed crystals of alumina hydrate are added, gradually growing as dissolved alumina attaches to them, precipitating out of the solution. These crystals are then washed and moved to a kiln for calcining, a process that heats them to 2,000 degrees, driving off water molecules and leaving behind pure anhydrous alumina. With pure alumina in hand, we approach the heart of the aluminum foil production process, a transformative stage where science and technology converge to turn a powdery white substance into shiny, malleable metal. This phase, known as smelting, is where alumina undergoes electrolytic reduction to become aluminum. Let's delve into the mechanics of this crucial process. The journey from alumina to aluminum is facilitated by a method known as the hall heru process, a breakthrough in metallurgical chemistry that made the mass production of aluminum possible. In this process, the alumina is first dissolved in a molten solution of cryolite, a mineral that significantly lowers alumina's melting point. This solution is contained in a large steel vat called a reduction pot, which plays a pivotal role in the smelting process. At the heart of the reduction pot lies a carbon lining that serves as the cathode, or negative electrode, while carbon rods suspended above the pot act as anodes or positive electrodes. When electric current flows through this setup, a chemical reaction occurs. The alumina is electrolytically reduced, meaning it loses its oxygen, which is attracted to the carbon anodes, forming carbon dioxide. What remains is pure, molten aluminum, which pools at the bottom of the pot. This process is not only a marvel of chemistry, but also of electrical engineering. Reduction pots are connected in series, forming long lines that can be several hundred meters in length. Each pot line can produce tens of thousands of tons of aluminum annually, highlighting the scale and efficiency of modern aluminum production. The pure molten aluminum harvested from the reduction pots is then ready for its next transformation. However, before it can become the foil that wraps our food, it must undergo further processing. This molten aluminum is carefully poured into molds to form large ingots or directly into casting devices for thin rolling. These ingots and rolls are the precursors to the aluminum sheets that will eventually be thinned into foil. The transition from a chemical compound in the Earth's crust to a metal that embodies both strength and malleability is a testament to human ingenuity and technological advancement. The electrolytic reduction process not only makes aluminum production feasible on a large scale, 
but also marks a significant step forward in our ability to harness natural resources for our use. As we continue to explore the journey of aluminum foil production, it's essential to appreciate the intricate processes and energy-intensive efforts that go into making this versatile material. From the depths of the mine to the reduction pot, aluminum's journey is a vivid example of how far we've come in understanding and manipulating the elements that make up our world. Upon emerging as pure molten aluminum from the smelting process, our journey now leads us to a pivotal phase, transforming this metal into the thin, versatile sheets known as aluminum foil. This stage, characterized by meticulous rolling and refining, is where aluminum begins to take on the form familiar to us all. The process begins with hot rolling. The aluminum, still glowing from the smelting process, is cast into large, thick slabs called ingots. These ingots, while still hot, are passed through rolling mills, massive machines that apply tremendous pressure to the aluminum. With each pass through the rollers, the ingots are flattened and stretched, gradually reducing their thickness and increasing their length and width. After hot rolling, the aluminum undergoes cold rolling, a process that refines its thickness to the desired level. Unlike hot rolling, which is performed at high temperatures, cold rolling occurs at or near room temperature, this method enhances the aluminum's strength and finishes its surface, making it smoother and more suitable for delicate applications like foil. Cold rolling involves passing the aluminum sheet through a series of rollers that incrementally reduce its thickness. This step-by-step -step thinning is meticulously controlled, aiming for the precise thickness required for foil, often less than 0.2 millimeters. The final steps in the foil making process are as crucial as the first. After reaching the desired thickness, the aluminum foil undergoes a series of finishing processes. These may include further annealing to optimize its properties, cutting to specific widths and lengths, and coiling onto rolls. Throughout these stages, quality control is paramount. Measurements of thickness, strength, and surface finish are taken to ensure the foil meets strict standards. The transformation from a raw solid metal to a thin flexible sheet is a remarkable feat of engineering and metallurgy. This process not only showcases the malleability and versatility of aluminum, but also highlights the precision required to produce materials that are integral to our daily lives. The role of recycling in the production of aluminum foil underscores the importance of a circular economy, where materials are reused and repurposed to the greatest extent possible. By supporting recycling efforts, consumers and industries alike contribute to a more sustainable and environmentally friendly production cycle. Aluminum foil, in all its simplicity, is a symbol of technological innovation, environmental sustainability, and the endless possibilities of material science. It serves as a reminder of the interconnectedness of our world where products of human invention can both fulfill our immediate needs and embody principles of ecological stewardship. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the production of aluminum foil.